big kids. I've got some sheets from our vacation Bible school spread out here. Y'all can look at those and kind of play with those and uh, study those while we go, we go through what, uh, what, what's happening. Uh, we're glad to have you here today. And uh, today's presentation is going to be uh, just a little bit different. We've got uh, Vacation Bible School coming up. And what we want to do is to talk about uh, how important this can be and should be and, uh, uh, and, and really what it means to so many and what an opportunity we have um, as a family together uh, to make a real difference in, in people's lives. Um, we started a series that we're interrupting and the series is titled uh, Creative Strategic uh, uh, Initiatives or basically how to live in a culture when uh, you're swimming upstream in a downstream world. And when we're going through the book of Daniel, we will pick that up next week, and we'll be in Daniel chapter 3. And where we left off last week was Nebuchadnezzar bowing down to Daniel after Daniel had interpreted his dream, and Nebuchadnezzar seeing that the God of heaven is the true God. In chapter 3 of Daniel, we see Nebuchadnezzar building an island to himself. And so even while he was ready to bow down to Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar was not willing to yield to God. And we're going to be talking about uh, what happens in a world where you're stuck, where people don't want to give God his due, and do not want to praise his name and lift uh, him up. And so come back next week and be a part of that as we continue that series. But what we're going to be talking about uh, the next few minutes is our Marketplace 29. It's been quite a while since we've done this, and I told my Bible class every year people call the office as the school days are running out and asking us when we're going, if we're going to do Marketplace again, and would we do Marketplace again. And so this year we're happy to say that we are. And you can already begin to see things uh, begin this transition that takes place when we do our Marketplace Vacation Bible School. One of the reasons why this uh, Bible school has been so very popular in our community is because it's hard. It doesn't come out of the box. Uh, you don't order it online. Uh, there are no cartoons. There are no pre-printed materials. There's no paper cutouts to stick on the wall of the classroom. It's a whole different mentality. And what we want to be able to do in our vacation Bible school, whether you have uh, uh, an infant all the way up through high school, because all of our Big kids who at one time uh, were led around here from tent to tent and shop to shop will now be the ones that will be leading the little ones to their tent. And it's been quite a while since we've done that. Uh, and what we need is uh, participation. It takes 67 people to put this thing on. Okay, That's how many we need total. Uh, we've got almost 50 who have already signed up. So that's great. So we're well on our way. But I want you to get excited about this because... When Jesus gets into the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, he gets everybody's attention by saying, here are some keys to happiness. Be poor in spirit. Be a peacemaker. Hunger after righteousness. And when the crowd is all clued in, he says, I want you to know the difference between you and the disciples of other people, the difference between my disciples and those who follow another is that I am transforming you into the light of the world. You're going to reflect and broadcast the good news of Jesus everywhere. He said you're like a city that's set on a hill and no one lights a lamp and then puts it underneath the bush of ashes. So everyone who is a follower of Jesus, whether they're aware of it or not, bears the responsibility of letting little rays of light come out of your life and season the life of others and help to direct the lives of others in a way that brings glory and honor to God. And one of the ways we can do this is through marketplace because everybody sees the transformation that takes place on the property as it begins to un uh, unfold. And then when it gets closer and closer to the time, your responsibility beginning now actually will be to talk this up in the community and ask your friends to bring their kids to vacation Bible school and, and be a part of this with us and give us the opportunity to meet people and to incorporate new people into us. Now, many of you are probably sitting there thinking, 
I've done three or four of these. Well, it's been a long time. So I'm going to walk through our marketplace strategy with you and share with you everything that we do. And, uh, and I really believe that you'll agree with me that this is one of the best things our church does for this community and something that can make a real difference in the lives of other people. Um, this uh, uh, layout basically shows what's happening. Uh, we have a, a place where people come in and register, and then they're given their authentic first century outfit to put on. And you get something to put around your head and something to put on, and then tie it in a belt to put it together, and you'll be given a bag of money. It's not really money, it's really beans and obtain gold, but we don't tell anybody. But anyway, and everything that you need to make the transformation of going from 2016 all the way back, because what we want to do is share a little bit of the culture and the experience of what it meant to live in the first century <clears throat> and to walk where Jesus walked. And the idea if we could see it, maybe relate a little bit to where Jesus walked, maybe we can find uh, our place with him. Now, all of these things make up a village or a town <coughs> or a community. And we find in the Bible, if you read the stories of Jesus, that Jesus was in these communities all the time. And everything centers around the Shema, the Amnehemi there. Or that was supposed to transliterate into Hebrew, but it didn't. So that's Shema spelled backwards, but that's a whole other story. But everyone who was a part of Jewish culture, from the time they were born all the way through life, from the very beginning, when you go all the way back to the days of Moses, all the way up to today, in the modern world, in the verses of Deuteronomy 6, uh, 4 and 5, the Lord our God is one God, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Every child in Jerusalem and in any place else that there are Jewish communities memorizes this and places it in it and in front of each house of mezuzah, and in that, they would touch that every day and open it up. And there they would find a little scroll. And on that scroll would be the Shema. And they would keep it close to them and a part of their life. And what we're going to be doing is trying to teach children how important it is uh, to keep the sentiments and the idea and the spirit of the Shema alive in their life. There's only one God. And he has asked us to love him with everything that we are. <clears throat> when the, uh, the people that opposed Jesus came to him and tried to trick him and ask him, which is, what is the most important law in the world? And Jesus said there's actually two. That is that you should love your Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And second, life into it, you need to love your neighbor as yourself. And so he took this Shema and incorporated it into the experience of being a child of God, even up to our modern times, and combining it with uh, this great need that we have to be able to be uh, lovers of other people and make sure that uh, we, we know that God loves them. One of the, what, what's going to happen in this is the, the kids will have lots of activities. The new activity this year is going to be athletics. And uh, it'll be a, a time for kids to be able to experience some of the things that young people would experience for fun in the first century. Uh, even, uh, uh, you might be surprised, I, I kind of was, maybe you're not, but uh, sack races go all the way back, past the first century. As long as there's been a sack, there's been a sack race. And I guess that makes sense. Uh, and things kind of like that. And other things, they did some things that we won't be doing. Donna suggested that maybe we do the javelin throw. I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, but, or, or then maybe let them make slings. I don't think we're going to. we got enough broken stained glass around here as it is. But anyway, uh, there's lots of things that they'll be doing. It's not just athletic events, but it's also the games that they play and the things that they did. Uh, they uh, uh, would, would make their own ball. Anybody who's traveled uh, down to Honduras, you've seen homemade soccer balls. Well, that goes all the way back to the beginning. As long as people have found something that would roll, they've kicked it or thrown it. And you'll be uh, making some of those things that will be a part of that. And also, uh, really a, a neat part was uh, uh, to learn to dance. That is, to move and step together uh, to express joy. In uh, Ma Ma Matthew chapter 11, Jesus quotes uh, Hosea and talks about how sad it is. Uh, for people to be separated from God and says that even when the flu is playing, now there are no children who dance in the street. And so this idea of expressing happiness and joy uh, was an important part of that. 
We have Steve and Ashley Till who are going to be heading this up. And uh, so if you'd like to be a first century coach, sorry that job's already taken, but I'm sure there'll be some things for other people to uh, do. I don't know who this guy is, but he is good looking. Uh, we're going to have a baby manger. And uh, uh, that means we're going to take all those kids and put them in a horse trough. <laughs> no, it's, uh, uh, we're going to have a place for the littlest ones to go. And so moms can help and uh, brother and sister can go to this place. It's basically going to be a nursery. And we're going to need people to sign up to do that. I have no idea who that baby is. Uh, but somebody might tell me afterwards. Maybe it's one of our teenagers now. I don't know. But we have no one uh, who signed up for that yet. So we need volunteers to step up and to be a, a part of that. Uh, one of the things that we do, went one too far, is our bakery. Now the way this works, our kids are going to be divided up into tribes, and we'll have tents outside. It won't be first century tents, they'll be, you know, Coleman tents, okay? Camp out tents, but as close as we can get. And when the children arrive and they have their garb and they get their money, uh, they will, first of all, they'll go into their tents, and uh, they'll have a tribal mother who will tell them their Bible story and go over the Shema with them. But one of the things that each tribe will do every day is take all the ingredients that it makes to make a first century bread. And they'll mix all that together and prepare that. And then someone from that tribe or the tribe mom or some assistant will take that to our bakery, which will be our kitchen. And then when they go through the entire uh, vacation Bible school experience and they come back to their tent at the end of the evening, uh, their fresh made bread that they mix will be there waiting for them and be part of the closing party. So we're going to need people uh, who will be willing to help uh, in baking the bread. And we have uh, Mary Frances and Letitia is Mary Frances' assistant. And uh, there's room for two more. So if uh, you'd like to help, here's an opportunity to be involved in Vacation Bible School. All you have to do is sit in the kitchen and talk, which is what folks do all the time, uh, around here anyway. And slide the bread in and sit down and talk some more and then slide the bread out. That's about it. Uh, so if you'd like to help and be a part of that, you say, I can't chase these kids around and stuff, then we got a very good place for you, and you can sign up out there. We're going to have an animal barnyard. Believe it or not, that little girl in the middle is Corley Major. <laughs> if you look at that, it took me a while to figure out. I don't know who the scared kid is. But anyway, uh, uh, we'll have some animals. And uh, there'll be uh, some animals, ranch cars, some goats, maybe a horse or two that we'll have that the kids will be able to interact with and to uh, be a part of. And guess what? We need a barnyard worker. So if you'd like to help and be a part of that, uh, you can be involved with that. Uh, we have beggars who walk around. The kids are going to have money. What's going to happen is they're going to go from shop to shop and learn about Jewish life and learn Bible stories along the way. And you'll have other people. There'll be other folks besides beggars. But we're also going to have uh, a beggar that's going to be around asking the little kids to give them money. Uh, this year, that job is already taken um, because uh, Daniel's about to have knee surgery. And he's going to be limping around anyway, so he decided he'd make a good beggar. So Daniel's going to be our beggar, except he requests real gold and not being painted gold. Okay? But anyway, uh, so that'll be a part of that. Uh, we need someone to help kids get into their career. There's Nick a long time ago, and uh, we've got these belts and headbands and headgear and uh, all those kinds of things. And we'll have things on tables outside under a tent, and you'll be able to match up boys and girls with different sizes. So that everybody gets to be a part of the first century. It kind of looks like that when it's set up. You'll have pouches, you'll have belts, you'll have headgear, uh, you'll have uh, the costume. And we need a couple of folks who will take responsibility for that and be a part of that. Jesus is going to be here. That's not Jesus. That's Bobby Brooks. He just thinks he's Jesus, but he's really not. But anyway, Bobby is gone. We've got a great new Jesus this year. Um, his name is Randall Harper. So... Uh, Randall's a big, strong guy, so if you make fun of Jesus, he'll probably beat you up. Uh, but uh, what's going to happen is Jesus is going to be in the community, and the kids will be gathering up from time to time and listening to stories that Jesus will tell them as they go from shop to shop as well. We'll have a jewelry shop. Kids will go there, and they'll be making some necklaces and some bracelets and things for the shopkeeper. And this is where your money comes here. As you go to each shop, 
You're going to have to pay for a few things as you go along. But I promise you, you will not run out of money before the vacation Bible school is over, okay? We've never had a kid go broke yet at vacation Bible school. Um, and uh, that's why I went to China fast. I got a lot of slides that want to hurry. But there will be those that are needed to help these kids pick out the things that they want to put together and uh, uh, be a part of. And the ladies here have always been a uh, part of that. And uh, Elizabeth loved it, evidently. And uh, those kinds of things in the jewelry shop looks something like that. And Mary Jo and Sue will be heading this up, so if you'd like to help them, uh, see them or sign up on the sheet out there at, between now and June when Vacation Bible School starts, your group will be getting together and going out from there. We have a new character this year. We're going to have a lady who will be the seller of purple. And this was the most expensive cloth that uh, was available. It took a lot of money. It was hard to get a hold of. And the Bible tells us a story about a woman named Lydia who was a seller of purple. And she met with other women down at the riverside to praise God on the Sabbath because there was no synagogue. And Paul went down there when he was in the city of Philippi. And he met Lydia and began to preach the gospel. And she was among uh, the first uh, converts in that uh, area and helped be a part of all of that. And uh, Katie Best going to be our Lydia. And she'll be walking around selling purple. And we may throw a few twists in there. Uh, might be a couple other shades available too before uh, things are over with. Each child will have a money pouch with their coins inside. And they'll be able to uh, use those and purchase things as they go around. And we need some folks to head that up to make sure that all that's together. The pouches are put together and ready to be distributed and so on. And one of the shops is going to be a music shop. Now... I'm, I'm sorry, I get caught up in this gift of forgetting some of these things. But uh, uh, kids are going to be making a harp at the music shop. Shelby cut out several hundred of these a few years ago. And they have not rotted. They have been waiting. They haven't warped. And uh, it's still in very good tune. And so the kids will be able to uh, make their own harp in one of the shops as uh, they go uh, around the area. And Stacy and Julie are heading this one up and could use a little help, so there's still room uh, for you to sign up and to be a part uh, of that. Another uh, important place is the spice shop, the olive oil and the spice shop, where uh, the kids come and they work with some of these spices. I'm gonna go a little bit ahead. Uh, last time I did this, we had a really good spice rack and the kids could go and uh, pick out their spices and uh, they would work on them and they would uh, uh, all have access to a a little more than a little, a little here, put their spices in, and line them up, and put that, and, and, and just have a good time with that. And actually, the stuff takes them to do it, and they put it all together, and the, the kids really, really enjoy doing this and seeing where spices come from, and that God has given us everything, and these great lessons that uh, are uh, a part of that. And this is what the spice shop looked like last time, uh, and it'll look probably something similar to that. Uh, coming up, Carol, Carol and, and Chasta and Becky Brand will be heading up. Uh, the Spice Workers have room for one more if you'd like to be a part of this. Uh, we'll do a pottery shop. Uh, I don't have a pottery deal up here, uh, but we've got a couple of potters here. And the kids will go and they'll be able to make what they want to make and uh, learn how important pottery was in the first century. The Bible has a lot to say about uh, how uh, we are the, uh, uh, the clay and God is the potter and we are to be shaped and this will be incorporated into their activities uh, that uh, are part of that and they'll be able to make some things and also as you can see there'll be learning sheets there as well uh, that they'll be able to learn uh, a good deal about what's happening in the world uh, and in, in the world of that. So Brooke and Denise are heading that up and that would be a great deal. There's room for a couple more if you want to get your hands dirty. This would be a great one. We need a praise leader. These kids need to learn these songs. The songs are, uh, that we decide to incorporate besides the overall song. There is a, a song uh, of the Shema that they'll be learning and singing. But in every culture, in every age, praising God was a very, very important thing. And so we, we need a praise and song leader. Uh, the last time we did this, we had a prayer rack and we're incorporating that into a prayer tent. Basically we'll have some posts with lines on it and people will be able to write out prayer requests and kind of weave them in that and hopefully make this beautiful tapestry that will be a part of where our hearts and minds are as we ask God to bless us and to be with us 
and to keep us. And we need someone uh, to do that as well. Uh, everything costs money, so we're going to need a tax collector. So when you kids are running around with your money pouches, you got to uh, take care of the beggar, and you need to hide from the tax collector, okay? Because <laughs> the tax collector will be going around uh, assessing the value of the things that you are making and levy a tax on you and take some money from you. And it's just the way that it worked in the first century. The tax collectors were not popular, and the Bible has a lot to say uh, about that. But at the same time, Jesus deliberately sought after tax collectors uh, to come and to be a part of, of, of his group. Matthew, the very first book in your New Testament, was written by a man who was a tax collector. And then decided to follow Jesus later. And so that thing is still open. We need to be able to register these folks. We want to be able to invite folks to come and be with us and to keep up with these. We'll have a registration area. And Julie and Stacy will be doing that. And then I guess run off to the other deal. What y'all are doing? I forgot. Music. Music. Run off the music class after that. Still room for two more. Um, we have authentic Roman soldier gear that uh, we found on an archaeological dig uh, over here where the playground is now. And uh, we have Roman armor and Roman helmets uh, for our Roman soldiers to wear. And uh, we even have a Roman shield with a spinner in it. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> so there'll be Roman soldiers walking around. And the Roman soldiers were not known to be the nice guys. But yet, once again, Jesus had a lot of dealing with Roman soldiers. Even before his arrest, Roman soldiers came to Jesus and asked him uh, to help them as well. And uh, we've got uh, the whole gear, and it's down there. And every year that we've done this, it's always these uh, young guys who uh, uh, want to be the Roman soldier. And usually have more folks who want to be Roman soldiers than we have outfits. But uh, we'll need some Roman soldiers uh, to be a part of... Uh, our Vacation Bible School experience. Hamilton and Colby are the ones that have signed up so far. There's probably room for one or two more. So if you'd like to be, what happens? The Roman soldiers can tell you guys, you don't remember. Everybody wants to be the Roman soldier. And then they put all that gear on and go out and heat. And then uh, somebody has to be the Roman soldier. So we'll probably need some more Roman soldiers. Uh, we make the rope. Rope is a very important part of first century life. And this is one of the most popular shops. We make sure we have this every time. It's something the kids will take home, be able to keep, tie around as a belt, or use it any way that they want to. The rope is really a good rope. Uh, we've had these folks working on this uh, for years, and it's, it's a really a neat process to watch. And they'll enjoy it. Arch's been involved with this. Jim's been involved with this. Bob's been involved with this. But they pick out their colors, and then they get ready, and they go uh, make their own rope at the rope shop. And uh, it'll be theirs forever. So Art and Jim are going to head that up this year. And that'll be an exciting time. Uh, there'll be a scribe's tent where children go to learn how to write Hebrew. And they'll have their own little, um, their own little, little pens and their own little ink wells that they'll be able to dip into. And they'll be able to uh, learn part of, of the Hebrew alphabet. And the whole alphabet will be on display up there. And the kids always enjoy doing this, trying to figure out how to make uh, those letters and talk about how those letters. When Jesus said that uh, not a jot or a tittle will be removed from the law, he is talking about letters in uh, the Hebrew language. It's a very good lesson for these kids to learn. So they'll have places to sit down and to write and to learn how to uh, make part of the uh, Hebrew alphabet. And it's harder than it looks. So uh, it's a, a very, very tough deal. I always like this picture because if you look at it real close, what Lynch did was he drew a face of the guy instead of his letters. But anyway, um, that's, uh, but anyway, I thought that was pretty good. And even old folks like to learn how to write Hebrew from time to time. So uh, there's the scribe tent, and you see all the letters hanging there. And we need someone to head up that, and sign the machine is out there. We're going to need a shepherd. Someone to go around and be a shepherd. We have their staff. We'll have a sheep or a goat here. They'll be part of that and, uh, um, and enjoy that as well. Uh, that's, that's not a sheep or a goat. They can shoot, I guess, go back with that. 
Uh, we're going to have a, a leather shop this year. And what they're going to be doing at the leather shop is basically be uh, making a binding for a little notebook that they'll be able to keep and to have with them and something they can take home. And we have all the sheets and everything, and that will be a good deal. And uh, we've had other guys work with them with leather and things in the past, and we need folks to sign up again for that. Uh, we have a new well that's under construction, and uh, this is where your children will go and meet with Jesus and hear the stories. And so it's a very important part of the Vacation Bible School. The well was a social center. Jenny Gillies, from the time of Jesus, you see this in John chapter 3, when Jesus is with the woman at the well, also with uh, uh, Abraham coming, uh, I mean Moses, meeting Mary and her family, uh, episode that took place at the well, etc., and so on. And so the well will be a, a very, very important part of this. This is where Bible stories will be told. Jesus will be there uh, to teach and to share and uh, to tell stories. And this particular year, Jesus raised a dead man and cracked up a bunch of folks at the same time. Uh, but anyway, it's always a, a, a really neat deal. And Stacy and Randall are going to be uh, helping that, but we will need other folks to kind of play some of these parts and some of these skits as they'll be, they'll be doing. But then the synagogue school is always one of the favorites as well. It's every day, children in the first century who were Jews went to the synagogue school and they learned the law of God there. The rabbi would uh, teach them, would open up the scroll that they would have and share with them from God's word, and then they would use clay tablets and uh, uh, sticks, uh, scribes, to be able to uh, make impressions in that. And kids will have the opportunity to take what they've learned at the scribe shop, bring it to the synagogue school, and be incorporated into uh, to what's, to what's going on. So uh, we need a rabbi, and we need an assistant. We have neither one right now. So if you'd like to be a part of that, you can. Uh, Bible is one of the great sources of learning about bricks. Everybody who they ever studied the Bible knows you need two things to make bricks. You need mud and you need straw. And so you'll be making some bricks. Here's one of the forms that we'll be using. The kids can learn how brick making was an important part of the first century experience. And they can be uh, involved with all of that and uh, uh, make their own bricks and be able to take them home. If you want to get dirty, you want to have a lot of fun, uh, this is a great place uh, to be. And then our tribal leaders that I talked about will have tents set up, and this will be the headquarters. Each tent will have a tribal name and a tribal standard that will stand out in front of each tent, and this will serve uh, as home base for everything that our BBS is a part of. In there, you'll make your bread. There will be snacks in there. There will be stories that will be told, uh, and this is where the teaching really takes place as well and becomes kind of the center's piece. Usually it covers the whole front of the, of the deal. We have six tribal leaders right now. We have Kara, Brianna, Kyla, Leah, Sandy, and Michelle. So we have six tribal leaders right now. Uh, we almost certainly will need more than that, and so it would be a good thing uh, to do. And then there is the final day. Final day, we usually eat watermelon. There's a lot of stuff to haul around, all the stuff, and so we need people to sign up uh, to be a part of the activities of the family and Kyla. Why is she so cute? Why did you have to grow up? But anyway, uh, uh, and, and, and something these kids, well, there's Hamilton, and uh, they always remember. And all these kids talk about all these things. Now, why do we do this? We do this because we believe these things matter. We believe the world that Jesus lived in was part of the story of Jesus. Jesus is always interacting with different tradesmen and different strata of his society and trying to figure out, you know, we want, but we also want a time that our kids know that this is your time. This is for you. And we want you to know how much we love you. We want folks to be finished, you know, how much we love them. We want to make ourselves uh, open to those around about us who are not part of us. And we want to make it part of our responsibility uh, to uh, continue in the mission of Jesus Christ <coughs> Let our kids be excited and proud about what they're doing at church and want to bring their friends and be a part of it and all those things that are there. There are packets out on the table um, for each one of the jobs that Donna has put out this morning. Uh, you can still sign up for this. And it's not, you know, every time we do BBS, we talk about how hard it is. 
And I know from experience that you take a kit that you buy from a publishing house to make it as easy as possible, it's still hard. And we take that and magnify it by about a factor of 50, I guess. And there's a lot of work, and it's hot, and kids are running everywhere, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And I just pray that God will give us the wisdom and the insight to see that uh, in order for something to be successful, it doesn't have to be easy. And we ought to pride ourselves in taking on big responsibilities and wanting to do something significant uh, in a way that brings God, I think, a lot of glory and honor at the same time it shows our children how much we pride us in the glory. I love Vacation Bible School, and I hope that you will too. And I hope that all of us will want to be a part of that and not, uh, and not uh, uh, shirk uh, that opportunity or responsibility. Yeah, I'm sorry, 10 through what? 5 through 8. 5 through 8. At 6 o'clock in the evening. 6 30 8 30. Okay. And then you have time. So, all that information is there, and all this is part of it, and all this is part of who we are, and I hope we'll continue to be part of the DNA that we have in us because we end where we began. Jesus challenging those who are his followers to understand that you are the light of the world. You are the city that has been set upon the hill. You are the one who has a lamp that either is under the basket or is out to plain view of their land. And this is a great opportunity. I want to thank God and everybody else has worked so hard on this. And if you want to help in any way, just see her, see Daniel, see somebody, and we'll make sure that you get plugged in. So let's have a time of prayer, and then after that, we'll move on to our closing. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We're so thankful for this day. And Father, I pray that you will bless this effort. And Father, that you will give us the spirit of mission as uh, we uh, leave this place each week. And Father, that we will let our light shine. And dear God, that we will uh, be bold in telling others about the good things that you have done and continue to do for us the great story of the victory that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, once again, we ask your blessing and we pray to your God in all things we may live for you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.